What was dismissed as nerd stuff 20 years ago is now the inspiration for the most successful films of all time. We're talking about superhero movies. Be it the Marvel Cinematic Universe or the DC Extended Universe, the two comic giants have been dominating the big screen for years. And who doesn't feel like slipping into the role of their favorite hero for just a few hours? Yet, whether this is always so much fun is a different story, because according to many actors, the costumes are not always as great as we imagine them to be. Sometimes costumes are too heavy, too tight or just very inconvenient in some parts. Since we don't want to deprive you of any detail, today we give you examples of actors who hated their superhero costumes. Who better to start all this than the father of success when you think of the MCU, namely Robert Downey Jr. Don't worry, we're not gonna give you sleepless nights and tell you he hated his role or anything like that. The fact is, however, that when Iron Man was filmed in the mid-2000s, CGI was unfortunately not yet up to today's standards. While almost the entire costume was created on the computer in the last Avengers parts, he unfortunately still had to get into the real suit of armor in the first part. This was not only heavy and inflexible, but also very tight. Downey Jr. not only told stories about several claustrophobic episodes, but also stated that he almost died during the shooting in the desert. We obviously hope that this was just an exaggeration on his part. Fortunately, technology has advanced considerably in the meantime, and we have been able to admire him in many different suits. It's hard to imagine what would have happened if he had left the franchise for a while. Why? Because he's Iron Man! As one of the movies not very popular among fans, X-Men Apocalypse joined the ranks of the franchise. Even though the idea behind the film was certainly not bad, it couldn't keep up with the success of its predecessors. It's a pity as you could see some promising mutants in the movie. One of them was Batsy Braddock, also called Psylocke. We'd already known the character from the 2006 film X-Men The Last Stand, in which the mutant was still played by a mailing Melanson. Ten years later, someone new was allowed to slip into the role, namely the beautiful Olivia Munn. She was very happy about her role, but not so happy about her costume. According to the motto Sex Sells, the costume makers wanted to show a lot of skin and let the scar's fabric fit very tightly. As a result, the costume apparently tore very often during action scenes. According to Hollywood insiders, Munn had to grease herself with Vaseline over and over again in order to fit well into the costume. None of it helped because her costume also flopped with the critics, which is actually a shame when you look at the original costume used in the comics. When you think of Ron Perlman, you think of movies like Pacific Rim, Fantastic Beasts, or the series Sons of Anarchy. Many do not associate him with the anti-hero Hellboy from the 2004 movie of the same name, though which is probably caused by the fact that the costume actually covers his entire body. In this case, the only thing left over by the makeup artist were his eyelids. Perlman himself said in the interview that he actually quickly grew sick of the costume. He was getting tired of the amount of effort that went to getting him into the costume every day. However, he did fall in love with his character so much that he didn't want to step down from the role. We are still very happy about that today, as the early Hellboy films from 2004 and 2008 are still very much worth watching. Make sure you can piss in that suit. That was probably the most important piece of advice Dark Knight actor Christian Bale gave his successor Ben Affleck. But this video is not about the classic black suit in which our Dark Knight chases the bad guys through Gotham. Today is about the armor which he developed specifically for the fight against Superman. Not only does it look very powerful, but of course it is also very powerful. Unfortunately, it was so heavy and bulky that it had to be taken off during the fight scenes and CGI had to be used instead. A small shortcoming that you can forgive the makers for sure, since a superhero movie without fights would certainly have been quite boring. Margot Robbie is one of the most popular actresses of recent years. She made her breakthrough in 2013 in The Wolf of Wall Street. Today, however, people tend to associate her with a crazy anti-heroine Holly Quinn from the DC Universe. She first appeared in Suicide Squad in 2016, and she was so popular that she even got her own movie last year with Birds of Prey. According to her own statement, however, she had to get used to her costume first. As unlike that of her teammates in Suicide Squad, it was more sexy rather than helpful or dangerous. While the others all wore black combat suits, Roby had to squeeze into tight hot pants and drenched white shirts. This made her a real eye-catcher in the movie, and Suicide Squad insiders even say that she got so used to it by the end that she once left her wet costume on during lunch break to comfortable eat a burger with the others. 
Probably one of the most complex costumes in the superhero franchise was given to Paul Bettany's vision in the MCU movies. Some of you might have thought that this costume and look was created on a computer, but that's wrong. Bettany spent hours every morning before filming began getting put on makeup and getting dressed in an air permeable suit. Where other acting colleagues would have surely gone crazy, Paul fought his way through. When asked how he managed it, he said in an interview that he mainly spent a lot of time reading and practicing meditation as soon as unpleasant feelings or even slight claustrophobia appeared. Kudos to him. And of course, we are all excited to see him in the new WandaVision Marvel series which is currently streaming on Disney+. Plus. Please don't make the super suit green or animated. That's what Ryan Reynolds said in Deadpool, and if you're wondering what was meant by that, we can assure you that you didn't miss anything. We still have to clarify the whole thing. What was probably insinuated was the first completely computer-animated superhero suit from Green Lantern. What was hoped to be a revolution at the time was torn apart by fans and critics alike, and even the actors didn't have many good words to say about the look of the suits. Deadpool director Tim Miller, for example, especially included a sideswipe or two against Green Lantern in the film. To this day, Reynolds vows never to step into the role of Green Lantern again, even though the rumors about a new film won't die down. Not every superhero has to wear elaborate makeup or heavy armor to feel uncomfortable. Sometimes it's enough to just put someone into a far too tight full bodysuit to make them feel uncomfortable. This is the case with Tom Holland in the role of Spider-Man, for example. The suit was very tight, so it was difficult for the actor to play the complex and very acrobatic action scenes. As if that wasn't enough, the costume was almost airtight, causing him to sweat a lot under the rubber suit just after a few minutes. But Holland was not the first spider actor to complain about this costume. His predecessor, Andrew Garfield, had already mentioned the same problems. However, he went even further, so apparently the costume designers didn't think about the fact that an actor also has to go to the bathroom once in a while. Thus, he had to take off almost the entire costume every time he had to go for a pee. Quite an exhausting process, we think. We saved the actress who probably hit it the hardest with her costume and its consequences for the end. We are talking about the part-time heroine and villain Mystique from X-Men, played by Jennifer Lawrence. Whoever thought that her costume was created by CGI is barking up the wrong tree. The makers wanted the costume to look exactly like that of Rebecca Romine from the first X-Men parts, so a total of seven makeup artists put makeup on Lawrence for hours on end every day of shooting and covered her with silicon scales. This was to create a kind of snakeskin effect. After that, she was sprayed with many different layers of paint to make it look even more real. The result looked very real indeed but gave Lawrence bad pus rashes and allergic reactions all over her skin. It wasn't until she told management that she was considering dropping out due to the impact on her body that her costume was adjusted. Less silicone and more color was used in addition to making the suit slimmer. Well, with such physical consequences, everyone would have understood if she had called it quits. In the end, all we can say is thank goodness they all held on because without them, the movie certainly wouldn't have become what they are today. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to leave us a thumbs up. If we've forgotten anyone who should have been included on this list, please let us know in the comments down below. See you next time!